the AMD Radeon RX 7900 GRE isn't exactly a new card, having been released in China back in July of 2023. But now that it's more widely available, and while we wait for additional cards for our roundup video, let's take a look at one of the more interesting models, the Sapphire RX 7900 GRE Pulse. And at an MSRP of $550, does AMD's latest card bring enough to compete with the RTX 4070 Super? And taking a quick look at the system we're using in these tests, we're currently using an Intel Core i9-14900K with 32GB of DDR5-7200 memory, Windows 11, and the latest press drivers from AMD. And moving over into the performance benchmarks, and when looking at the average scores of 25 different games, we can see that the Sapphire Pulse is just a little bit faster than the RTX 4070 Super by about 2%. That does make it about 10% faster than the RX 7800 XT, and the RTX 4070 Ti is about 6% faster. And really, this card is pretty well positioned for AMD, with the RX 7900 GRE slotting comfortably in the middle between the RX 7900 XT and the RX 7800 XT. And that's a good place to be, as the Sapphire Pulse comes in at just under 120 FPS which is about 20 frames less than the RX 7900 XT, about 10 frames more than the RX 7800 XT, and about a frame and a half faster than the RTX 4070 Super. Bumping up the resolution to 4K doesn't change the charts all that much, with the lower 12 gigabytes of VRAM on the RTX 4070 Ti and RTX 4070 Super not really coming into play. The RX 7900 XT is about 19% faster, and the RX 7800 XT is about 10% slower. When isolating for the 1% lows, the Sapphire RX 7900 GRE Pulse is still faster than the RTX 4070 Super, but the difference now is less than a frame. Not too much to say on this chart other than the RTX 4070 Ti and above are able to hold 60 FPS at all times, at least at 4K, while the RX 7900 GRE falls a bit short at 56.5. Dropping down to the trusty 1920 by 1080 again doesn't really change these charts at all. The faster cards are still faster, the slower cards are still slower, and the Sapphire RX 7900 GRE Pulse is right in the middle. Even with the 14900K, we are going to start introducing CPU bottlenecks when looking at this caliber of card, so let's move on to ray tracing. And as expected, this is where we finally see a big difference between AMD and Nvidia. The RX 7800 XT is still about 8% slower than the 7900 GRE, and the 7900 XT is about 13% faster. But now the RTX 4070 Super is a whopping 25% faster, competing with a much more expensive RX 7900 XTX. Power consumption on the Sapphire RX 7900 GRE Pulse is about where you'd expect, coming about 15 watts more than the RX 7900 XT, and about 12 watts less than the RTX 4070 Ti. That does mean it uses 47 watts more than the RTX 4070 Super, but overall not a bad showing. And that rings doubly true when we look at fan noise. And while we'll have to wait for the Roundup review to see how the Sapphire Pulse compares to all the other 7900 GRE cards, for now the Sapphire RX 7900 GRE Pulse showcases it does a very good job at dissipating heat and only generates 26.1 dBA while doing that. Quickly taking a look at overclocking performance, and we were able to get 11.7% better performance when overclocked on the RX 7900 GRE, but that is with the known bug that limits overclocking performance on the memory, so these scores might improve over time. What also might improve over time is this card's performance per dollar, but as it is now, at $550, it provides basically the same value as the $50 cheaper RX 7800 XT, and a bit better value than the RX 7700 XT. That does position the Sapphire Pulse pretty well when shopping against other cards, since if you look at all the cards that provide more performance per dollar, all those cards are slower. 
And that's not really good news for NVIDIA, since their closest competitor, the RTX 4070 Super, currently retails for $40 more and is a touch slower. It does have better ray tracing performance and access to the DLSS suite, but for gamers looking for the most bang for their buck, the Sapphire RX 7900 GRE Pulse is a great option.